When we started, we didn't know anything about uh, meat production. So uh, we went on uh, Google and Google uh, Meat, and we got our first uh, basic uh, old school recipe for meat. And uh, it all started there. How did you start working together on this brewery? Uh, we started in 2011 when uh, Michael called and said, Torben, we have to make some meat. And I said no, because meat was it was uh, it was a really sticky, dark fluid in my mind, uh, very yeah, very very sweet, sickening sweet. Mm -hmm. So uh, you you could drink a glass of it, but uh, but otherwise, and uh, but then I was thinking about it, and I said, okay, I buy some honey and. Uh, Michael, he bought the, some of the, we use these uh, big uh, glass jars. So he bought a couple of those and cleaned them. And I, I bought the first honey from, from a beekeeper here in Melling. Mm -hmm. So I bought uh, 10 kilos from him or something like that. And we started. My name is uh, Michael Skyt Jørgensen or Michael Skyt Jørgensen. You're a very niche within a niche we are. A yeah. company or, yeah. or environment. Yeah. So why is it uh, so niche that your meat is dry? Well, the traditional meat is sweet or really sweet. We have to be uh, faithful to ourselves here. So we don't we don't do or we don't uh, like the sweet one. So we have to make this uh, wine because this is what we like. So, so uh, we, we uh, specialize in dry meats, but we also do some semi-sweet meats, but not these traditional uh, really sweet wines. So probably the hangover is not as bad. <laughs> I would say it's the same. It's the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would like to know a bit more about your company. So we started in uh, 2011. I am, am a member of a uh, Viking uh, reenactment group in Aarhus, and I realized that uh, meat was popular among Vikings. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't actually into meat at the, this time because I thought it was too sweet and uh, I, I didn't like it. It was too much for me. Then uh, I realized that uh, I could, uh, when you buy this Viking equipment, it's really expensive. Uh, I realized that uh, I could trade meat for equipment. Mm -hmm. And then I called uh, Torben and told him we have to do this meat because uh, we can use this as, as, a, as a currency. That's crazy, that's amazing. I didn't mm. even know there was a group of, uh, how did you call it? A Viking? Viking reenactment. Reenactment yeah. group. Yeah. What do you do inside this group and what kind of equipment do you trade for meat? Well, uh, the group is uh, a fighting group. So we do uh, uh, Viking fighting with swords and axes and spears. And uh, we meet two, two times uh, a week and do this uh, f f fencing, you can call it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you need a lot of gear to, to, uh, to be able to do this. So uh, that was when I realized meat could help me. It is said that meat is the mother of all wines. Uh, it's a really simple wine. It uh, contains honey, water and yeast. And that's it, actually. Then you can put berries in it and uh, herbs and stuff, but in its uh, base, it's just honey, water and meat. That's just it. That's it. You can do it at uh, home. Uh, and it's really and it. how are you making it here? Well, we do the same here. We mix the th three uh, components and then we add herbs and berries. Uh, but we only use local honey and only local berries and herbs. It's easier for us to just go out and, and, and pick it ourselves than uh, buy a product, a standard, standardized product uh, in a shop. We, we take every berry, the small one, the big one, um, uh, the bad one perhaps, mm -hmm. because it gives um, our unique taste when we do it this way. Very Danish taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here in Melling Mjød we are doing small uh, batch. That means we are only uh, making around 200 liters a time. And uh, we are using plastic barrels, like these ones, different styles. Uh, but soon we will upscale to uh, a thousand liters in these uh, tanks. Um, it takes a lot of honey to make a tank around uh, 400 kilos. So uh, we are popular at the beekeepers uh, house right now. But let's uh, have a look in one of these barrels. This one 
right here is going to be um, a sparkling meat. Let's have a look in it. You uh, can see uh, that it's not clear yet, but uh, it'll be filtered and it'll be put on uh, bottles, uh, champagne bottles. And hopefully it'll be uh, really nice and sparkly uh, next year. And of course we can call our sparkling meat uh, champagne because it's only champagne. Uh, but uh, we will call it uh, perhaps just sparkly meat. We can have a look in one of the more traditional meats we do. Like this one right here. It's the more traditional, it's in a dark barrel. This one is the slow uh, cherry. So the wine is dark as a red wine, but really a fresh and fruity uh, wine. And actually right now we are talking a lot about uh, food waste here in Denmark. And we are uh, in the future going to produce a spirit based on meat, uh, a meat product. Um, we are collecting, every, every time we do a, a barrel, we will have a, a waste product. We are collecting these uh, waste products in, uh, in barrels and later on we will make it into a spirit. So uh, uh, a spirit made on meat. A lot of people ask us about our Elon Mjød, uh, the smoky uh, butterscotch meat we do. Uh, actually, uh, it's not that romantic actually because uh, we don't have oak barrels. Uh, we have chips, oak chips. Oak chips like uh, these ones. And we use them because it's really uh, easy for us to control the process. Uh, if we put uh, our meat on a barrel, it'll get really, really intense oaky, uh, undrinkable. This one, when we use uh, this, this type of uh, smoked uh, oak, uh, we can control the process and we can uh, stop the process when we uh, are certain that the wine is where we want it to be. Not romantic, but uh, it does the same work as an oak barrel. Piece of wood, it's the same. This is uh, chips. You can have a barrel. The oaky meat is uh, this one. E nice. Lund. E, the first letter here is actually oak in Danish. So uh, it was easy to find a, a name for this product, actually. Wine that we uh, would say per, uh, matches uh, sushi examples, yeah, and smoked fish. Right now we use uh, plastic barrels. And many people don't know that about plastic barrels, but they actually are micro breathable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that means that uh, the, the wine will get a little bit of uh, oxygen and uh, it makes oxidation, uh, which, uh, which uh, is a, a super thing for meat when talking about meats. We can do about uh, 5,000 liters a year. Yeah, yeah 5, well, well liters yeah, so, or 6,000 now with the new uh, tanks. Uh, but it takes 12, 12 months to make a, a, a meat here, a minimum, mm -hmm. so, so we can't actually uh, sell that fast. Much. No. How much do you have in stock right now? Uh, it's been a, a, a great summer, uh, so I guess we have around 600 bottles ready right now, but we will uh, be able to do, make uh, four, 500 more uh, really fast. By the end of this year? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, now we could do it now, but we don't uh, have the bottles ready for it. Ah, the so. actual a glass bottles. Yeah. You need to yeah. Them yeah. We bottle it here, right here. Yeah. Uh, we have a really uh, old fashioned and simple machinery to, to bottle it. But we do it ourselves right here. This is a really, this is the smallest bottle you can get. It's really low tech because you just put the bottle on, you put the wine in this container right here and just stick the bottle in and tip it and then it will uh, put the wine into the bottle. I am la lazy by nature. We used to actually, uh, actually uh, fill the bottles uh, in hand like this, uh, but then we talked about it, there must be an easier way to do it. And we just Googled it and uh, we found this one. You can get a lot of really expensive equipment and this was the cheapest we could get. But it does the job. Who's buying your meat right now? We thought we would have a lot of customers uh, among uh, restaurants because we do a, a wine that could uh, be used as a white wine, for example. And our types of meat 
matches a lot of dishes. But we realize now that actually uh, cocktail bars are uh, more eager to buy our product than uh, the restaurants. So we have uh, changed focus from the restaurants to the cocktail bars instead. What kind of cocktails are these bars making with your meat? I would say avant-garde cocktails. I would say uh, they try to do use our meats in more traditional cocktails as well. And they create new ones uh, because uh, this ty type of wine uh, opens new doors. We're going to disclose the recipe of a cocktail that you're launching in the Aarhus Food Festival. Here we are, yeah. Mm -hmm. We are participating in a competition uh, together with a Danish uh, spirit um, producer, Njort, uh, mm -hmm. who produces uh, gin. Together with them we are competing a uh, stouning uh, rum and mm -hmm. uh, um, a local uh, snapse firma. A firm against called, them? Yeah, against them. Okay. Who can make the best cocktail. Yeah. And do you know uh, which ingredients are you going to use in this cocktail? Meat mm -hmm. and gin. And gin. Yeah, and that is what I can tell you right now. We've had a lovely afternoon here in Maling, very close to Aarhus. Checking out the brewery of meat is very delicious. And these guys have just shown all the production they have. If you want to try it out, if you want to see what they're doing, join them at the Aarhus uh, Food Festival, 6, 7 and 8 of September. See you around and keep on checking out the content of Love Aarhus TV.